Welcome to Planet of NY Sports. Here we talk Yankees, Mets, Giants, Jets, and a little bit of the Knicks and Nets. So today we will be doing a Giants versus Commanders pregame. Like I said before, this is probably the Giants' biggest game of the year. And for once, the New York Giants are finally playing meaningful football in December. I would have never thought we would say that this year. I thought the season would be pretty much over, but it's not. So let's get into it. Um, Alex, I know you have a little uh, injury report. So would you like to talk about that? Yep. Um, unfortunately, this week we have three out and 11 listed as questionable. And unfortunately, one of those 11 is Darius Slayton, who has been, I guess you could say, our best receiver for the year because of all our injuries and stuff. So, um, so we'll start for, for the people that are definitely out. We have our O lineman, Joshua Izudu with a neck injury, Adoree Jackson out with a knee injury, of course, and then Sean Lim Limu out with a toe injury. Um, and for the 11 questionable, we have still Danny Bellinger out with his eye injury, um, Dane Belton out with his clavicle injury. Running back Gary Brightwell with an illness. Linebacker C Carter Coffin with a thigh injury. John o Lyman Josh Feliciano with a neck injury. Darnay Holmes out with a questionable with a soldier injury. Richie James with his knee injury. Fabian Moreau with his oblique injury. Then we have Darius Slayton with the illness. And the two newest additions would be Kenny Galladay with the illness and Mark Wolinski with a back injury. That is a lot of names. Is a lot of names that yeah that is like a lot a lot of names and this is and this is a big game coming up we're gonna really need to be healthy seriously because we're facing this washington defense they're they're one of the hottest teams in the league right now over these last few weeks this is going to be a very tough game and like i said before you're gonna face them again in washington after this game they have their bye week and then they face us again so that's going to be like really tough to go into Washington after they had two weeks to prepare for us after just seeing us. So it's kind of like you're in a tricky spot there. So you're going to really have to win this game if you want to solidify yourself as a playoff contender. Because also Seattle, they have the tiebreaker over you. So you're going to have to worry about them now. And hey, we may get into a scenario where every single NFC East team is in the playoffs. That is something. Alex, can I get your thoughts on that? I mean, yeah. I mean, this year it's been NFC beast, you know. Um, our division, you know, surprisingly has been really good. You know, we've stepped up definitely this year. Washington has definitely stepped up. And they got the Eagles going. What? They only have one loss. And, you know, you have the Cowboys. They're doing well, too. So, I mean, we have a good division. And it's going to be tough to, you know, triumph and try and make it make our way into the playoffs. Yes, yes, for sure. So, um, Alex, I also noticed you have um, a quote from the Entertainer Talking Sports number one Giants fan. He's one of my favorite content creators. So, uh, would you like to talk about this with Daniel Jones? Uh, Alex, you're muted. My bad, my bad, my bad. So, <laughs> right. as you can see on the screen, we definitely have a lot of problems with our wide receivers, and it definitely shows. I mean, for every 15.8 pass attempts that Daniel Jones has, there's one drop. And while you see, you see how big the difference is from one to two. I mean, it's almost basically double. Kirk Cousins only has one drop every basically 30 pass attempts. And then you have below him, you have Hurts, 28.9. And then you have Burrow, 31.46, and the list goes on. But, I mean, it just shows how injuries have riddled us and riddled this team and how we definitely need some of our core players back in. It's not good to not have wide receivers. Yep, for sure. Now, I would like to go over some keys to victory here for the New York Giants. So the first one is control the clock. I know I say this literally all the time, but in the Giants seven wins this year, their average time of possession was 32 minutes and 32 seconds. I know that's pretty ironic. And then in their four losses, it was 28 minutes and 44 seconds. So obviously, the more the Giants control the clock, the better it is for them. You know, it's we have the numbers right here. And also the commanders, they've had uh, the time of possession advantage in six games. 
And, you know, we know how they've been doing in those six games where they've been on like this winning streak. Taylor Heineke's looking good. They got the mojo on their side. So we're really going to have to control the clock this game. Also, handle the pressure. Like I said, this Washington defense, oh my gosh, it, it's it's going to be really, you know, the O-line is going to have to step up. I, I feel like I'm saying this every single week with this team, but it's true yet again. The O-line is going to have to step up this game. Now, also, we're going to need our best players to step up in a big spot. I know I say it all the time like Mad Dog, a big spot, big spot. We're gonna need every. We're gonna need Saquon. We're gonna need him to get going. You know, Kayvon Thibodeau. I want to see him have a breakout game. I want to see Kayvon Thibodeau. I'm gonna challenge him. I want to see him have a really, really breakout game. Um, I think that would be you know nice for the Giants because we're gonna need to apply some pressure too. And let, I would like to see Kayvon Thibodeau maybe get a sack or two because he does he does good at getting pressure and stuff. But like he doesn't get the sacks, so it's like, eh, you know. So I also have some more keys to victory. And okay, so this is gonna sound a little weird, but you don't even have to do much against um, Washington's run attack. You really don't. You don't have to do a lot against their run attack because the Commanders' running game is definitely the weaker part of their offense. Brian Robinson Jr. and Antonio Gibson. They have combined for 943 yards this season, and that's, you know, around 50 yards or less than Saquon. So, like, you know, obviously they're running they're running backs. They're like, OK, but like, you know, you just have to be OK and you don't have to really worry about their running game. So that's, you know, but here's the thing. The Giants, they have not been good against the run this year. They've been like just, you know, so like if they're just like a little average against the run this game, they'll be okay. They'll be fine, and they should be able to, you know. Now, also, we know I go over this every week. There's always a big playmaker on the other side, and for the Washington Commanders, that is Terry McLaurin. Uh, it's pretty obvious. We're going to have to really limit him this game if we want to win. So, and also, Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel, too. He, he's also a pretty nice player. We're going to have to limit both of these guys. You know, I know our secondary is, you know, last game. We're not even going to get into that. But still, we're going to have to limit both of these guys and limit the big plays from them. And like I said, force them to run the ball because they're running backs. They're, you know, they're, they're not that good. They're running, they're running um, game is, is not the strongest point of their offense. Now, um, another topic, you have to win the turnover battle. You have to win the turnover battle. Like I said, the commanders, they're like in the middle of the pack with the fumble recoveries and the forced fumbles. And they, um, you know, I think the Giants too, they're also ranked like 30th in the league with um, for interceptions. So both of us were like, you know, not very good with the turnover battles, but we're going to have to win that. So Alex, what's your take? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, like you said, we were bringing up most of the same points over the weeks, but it's because it's really what needs to be emphasized. Like, you know, the defense definitely needs to step up. Uh, Xavier McKinney may be coming back some point in the season, but who knows when that's going to be. Uh, his He still has pins in his hand. His hand is still swollen, so who knows when that's going to happen. Um, and somebody, I think Saquon's definitely going to need to step up this week too because I feel like over the past couple weeks, he hasn't been doing as well as, you know, he can be. And if Saquon can step up and we can get that run game going better back, I feel like it'll be something that, you know, we don't have to force the run game, but at least if the run game's going good, then maybe, hopefully, we can have some of our pass game going so we can mix it around a little bit and throw off the defense. You're muted. Okay, so also, one more uh, thing I wanted to talk about is Daniel Jones. We should just let him do his thing this game. And, then, you know, and whoever's going to say, oh, yeah, is his thing doing fumbles or something? No, no. We're, we're, you know, he, he doesn't turn. Actually, I'm not even going to say it because then next thing you know, he's going to turn the ball over and have a fumble again. And, you know, he's going to pick the ball. So let me knock on wood here. But anyways, I was going to say, let Daniel Jones just let him, you know, he always does good against Washington. 
let him do his thing this game. You know, don't let him run the ball. Don't, you know, with these short pat let him cook. Let him cook against Washington. This is like the one team. There's always like, you know, one team a player does really well against. And for Daniel Jones, that is Washington. That is Washington. Um, Alex, so is there anything else uh, you want to maybe discuss? In general, or you mean keys to victory? Um, both. Uh, I mean, I guess we could talk about the old L situation for a little bit if we want to. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's talk about so, that. So for old L... Um, there, apparently there is belief that he wants to be a giant and he, as he wants to win in a big market and in New York city can be a home for his family. Um, I mean, on Odell, I'm kind of like split because I wouldn't mind having him, you know, he's a great receiver, but at the same time, his, in his health, his health, like kind of scares me because you don't know how healthy he's going to be. And really what we don't need is to pick up another injured player just to have on our IL. And just have to spend all this money on. And I feel like our chances are probably not that well in getting him because Dallas definitely has a better situation. You know, their team right now is definitely playing better than us. Um, you could probably get a better deal for them. I feel like it'll probably be going all in that direction. Yeah. And I also have um, a meme here. It's the Giants, it happens all the time. We have a terrible wide receiver corpse. We see injury prone wide receiver in free agency, you know, in this case, Odell. Then we sign them, and then they underperform, and then it's the same thing. It happened with Kenny Galladay. It happened, you know, Golden Tate. It's always with the Giants. I don't know why this always happens, like, with Giants and injury-prone wide receivers. But, hey, you know, like I said, Alex, I agree with Alex. I'm definitely split here. I don't, I don't think he's coming here. If I had to, like, give him, like, a percentage of Odell coming here, I'd probably say... I give, I'd say like 30, 30%, 35. I, I, I'm really not confident with him like coming here. Cause like, why would he, you know, I think he's going to go to Dallas. I, I like, why would you, you know, come to New York? Like, even if you think it's going to be a, apparently a place for your family, like, why would you, would you really rather be in New York or Dallas where you're probably going to get, you know, treated better? Like, you know, Jerry Jones, I'm sure he's going to pay him more. I, the giants, they have like no money to really give Odell anyway, unless we're cutting like someone who I don't know who we're going to cut. And then you got uh, Kenny Galladay's awful contract already. I'm not going to get into Kenny Galladay. Apparently he's sick. I, I just, it's just, he's just a waste of money. I don't know why we have to always go through this. Like I said, we got Golden Tate and then it's Kenny Galladay and Sterling Shepard's always hurt. And all these receivers for the Giants are always hurt. It's always been like that. It's, it's tough. It's really tough. Now, anyways, Let's just go into the Giants schedule. So the Giants coming up, they have pretty rough patch of games here. Let's look at it. So the hardest remaining strength of schedule um, and look at the Giants winning percentage there, 688. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. We, we can look at their uh, next few games here. So we obviously know Washington, and then next week you have the Eagles. I I, I really don't know if we're going to beat the Eagles. That's just like that's like a pipe dream. Um, then you got the Commanders on the road when the Commanders already had a bye week to prepare for us. Basically, that's I'm not feeling too confident about that. Then the um, Vikings. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be one interesting debate with uh, Roderick. The, the mad Mets fan. But anyways, I digress. Um, then we have the Colts at home. That should be a win. Like, if we don't win that game, we're not making the playoffs at all. I don't want to hear any more playoff talk, and we'll probably be a middle team. And then we also have the Eagles' last game of the year. So, now, I never I never root for the Eagles, but I did hear this. If you're a Giants fan, you're kind of almost hoping the Eagles kind of just beat everyone else because at this point, you you want them to to like rest their players that last game of the season. Because if you get into a scenario of let's say Minnesota is possibly tied with them or something for that number one overall seed, the last game they're gonna you know play everyone against the Giants, and that's gonna be really tough. But let's say they just play their backup QB and like you know their all their backups, then we're fine and we should be able to win that game. Alex, what do you think about um, the Giants' upcoming schedule? 
Yeah, I mean, I basically think the same thing. Like we talked about, you know, Washington, we're definitely going to need to win this game tomorrow. And the game against them at home, I feel like it's going to be tough because, like we said, they have a bye week. They have two weeks to prepare, you know. So it would definitely be difficult to win that. Colts are definitely an easy win. And I definitely also agree with the Eagles how we kind of want them to win all the rest of their game so they would rest their players. And we have the chance to, you know, hopefully make it to the playoffs on that last game. Yeah, and if you want to make it to the playoffs, it starts this week, starts tomorrow. You have to win this game. You have to win because you do not want to fall to last place. And then, you know, Washington, uh, like I said, Seattle, they already have the tiebreaker over you. So let's say if you fall into that last wild card spot, you're basically looking in, you're hoping for help at this point. And if we, we, we can look at the Seahawks schedule. Let's look at that. So this week they have the Rams and Matthew Stafford is apparently going on the IR. So that's, that's you know, we, we know what's happening there. Um, after that, they have the Panthers. That's probably another win. So that's already two wins, most likely, for the Seattle Seahawks. Then they have the 49ers. Okay. Then they play the Chiefs. Okay, they'll probably lose that game. Then they have the Jets. Tough game, but they're playing in Seattle. And then they have the Rams again. So... They, they definitely have a more favorable schedule than us, you know, besides like the Chiefs and the Jets. They, the rest, you know, even the 49ers is kind of like, eh, you know, I can see them winning that game maybe. But other than that, they have, you know, some winnable games. As opposed to the Giants, we still have to face the Eagles twice, Washington twice, Minnesota, you know, on the road. I, I'm not feeling too confident here. It's, you know, it's... It, the, it's going to really suck because if we go like nine and eight and then we miss out on the playoffs, it's going to be like, you know, like I get we're still rebuilding, but you're, you're going to have a mediocre draft pick. You're, you, you know, you're not going to be able to draft. Like I said, all the giant and the, all, for the giant fans too that think, oh yeah, we could just get rid of Daniel Jones and we'll draft the QB. No, you're not getting a QB. You're not. You already have seven wins. You are not getting a QB. Get over it. We are re-signing Daniel Jones, whether you like it or not. It's going to happen because, you know, he's, he's not going to get a lot from any other team anyway. We'll probably give him, like, let's say a two-year deal. And then, you know, do, well, but that also depends on how they finish the season. Because, you know, you got people like uh, Boomer and Geo on WFAN who think the Yankees, uh, not the Yankees, see, I'm so obsessed, the Giants won't win another game for the rest of the year, which is totally possible. That is, that's totally possible. With this next uh, slate of games, let's just look at it again here. Let's just look at that. You know how tough this is. I like, if you can beat the commanders tomorrow, it'll be like, okay. And then let's say eight and four, eight and five, and eight and six. And then you're going to have to, you, you definitely have to win that Colt game get nine wins, and then it's the Vikings and the Eagles. You're going to have to win one of those. So they're going to have to win, like, two games we don't expect them to win if they really want to get in the playoffs. That's going to be tough. Are we cut out for it? I'm not sure. There's not a lot of talent on this team. If Odell comes here, that will be nice, but we don't even know how much he's going to, you know, contribute. But something tells me if Odell comes here, he probably won't contribute much. And then he'll go to the Cowboys and then, you know, he'll explode and go off. It just wouldn't surprise me at this point, knowing that's just the Giants' luck. It's probably going to happen. I, you know, I'm shocked that the Giants didn't get turned off by the whole airplane incident because you know how much the Giants, you know, don't like distractions. Yet we had guys like Kadarius Tony, who was a red flag from day one. Day one, mind you, young Joker. Yeah, I like my rapping. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a rapper. Also, apparently, he was like the only Chiefs player that didn't show up to practice recently. Exactly. And he got hurt again. And he got hurt again. I, I don't want to hear it. And, you know, people saying, oh, yeah, it's the Giants' fault. No, it's not. No, it's not. The guy is a head case. And he was a waste of a pick. Because guess what? We could have had Micah Parsons. We could have had him. We could have had Micah Parsons. I remember I was sitting on the couch. I was like, Michael Parsons, Michael Parsons. Then they traded the pick. And then I was like, eh, okay. But, you know, Dallas was next. And what did they do? They just snatched up Michael Parsons. And I was like, this isn't going to age well. And and look at look look at it. He's killing us. He's killing the rest of the league. 
Uh, it's 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 not good. It's it's really not good. And we were stuck with a rapper who we traded for like a you know a third round pick. Uh, he's a he's, he's a waste. It's a waste. Thank you, Dave Gettleman. Thank you for really messing up this team. You, you know what? No, let me calm down here. Let me calm down. Because I don't want to get into the whole free medium Pepsi thing, you know, with Joe Judge. All right, we're not doing that. We're going to stay away. We'll, we'll save Joe that for a rant episode. You know? Exactly. Because <laughs> if the Giants lose this game, there may be a rant episode. There may be a rant episode. But in our rant episodes, they do well. But I don't want to I don't want to have to do a rant episode. I really don't. But, you know, if the, if the Giants lose tomorrow, right after the game, there's going to be a rapid rant video right after i may even live stream it because i'll be so mad and just, you know so be on the lookout for that potentially if the giants lose giants please i don't want to have to make that video please i i you know i we should we should win this game and this is a legacy game you know you, you got to show up this game seriously you're wearing those uh the nice throwback jerseys, I like those. You, you got to win this game. You gotta win. If you don't win this game, it's almost like you can kiss the playoffs goodbye. Unless unless you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna somehow beat the Eagles next week, which I doubt. Like, you know, do we really think the Giants are gonna beat the Eagles? No, they don't match up with them talent wise. They don't match like they don't match up with the Eagles well at all. That's why I'm saying they're gonna have to win that last game of the year and hope the Eagles basically bench everyone. And even then it's going to be like, I'm sure they'll have Jalen Hurts play the first half and stuff. So it's, you're in a very tricky spot there. So uh, Alex, anything else? Uh, I think that's all. Okay. Well, everyone, please subscribe. Please like the video. Please um, just, you know, just hope I don't have to make a rant video tomorrow because, like I said, if the Giants lose, I'm getting on here as fast as I can. And I'm ranting and I'm going off. Well, it, it depends how we lose. It depends. But if we get blown out, if we get blown out by this Washington team. Uh, but also, just, just to piggyback one more thought here, Washington has definitely shown us that the Eagles, they're not like, you know, impossible to beat it's gonna be it's gonna be really hard but you're gonna have to win two games we don't expect you to win and i don't even ex like i'm in the middle like with the giants beating washington this game before i would have been like yeah guaranteed when we beat them um at home now i'm not washington they've been hot you know the giants they're not the giant <laughs> um the giants they don't have any talent on the team um, so we have like 14 injuries. I mean, exactly. What, what, oh, what more is there? One note though, Evan Neal will be back tomorrow. Evan Neal will be back. So that'll be big for the offensive line, but he's going to be rusty though. And you know, rusty alignment. That's, that's not the recipe for success, especially when you're a rookie. We already saw, you know, him against the Cowboys. That was just a little, that was really bad. I, I I don't want to talk about Evan Neal and the Cowboys. That was like a really, really bad game. But he's coming back, so that should boost the offensive line. And um, one more note here. Apparently, Nick Gates is expected to start at left guard. Eh, I'm not feeling too – like, Gates, he's always been a little, like, you know, it's, like, inconsistent. Sometimes he'll do, like, okay. And then sometimes, like, when he's bad, he's really bad. So we'll see with Gates here. Um, he started at center uh, last week, but uh, Feliciano, he's back. So that's, that's good too. So we're like, our O-linemen are coming back. We're going to really need our O-linemen this game against this Washington defense. And um, Chase Young, he's also list, listed as doubt, doubtful. He's listed as doubtful, but, you know, be on the lookout for that. So I expect Chase Young back when we play them again. So... That's why I'm saying you really got to get this game because going into Washington, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Going against Taylor Heineke, if they were starting Carson Wentz this game, I'd be like, oh, please, like Carson Wentz. Uh, or be, let's be real here, Car you know, the, Washington doesn't even want him to start. So, 
Anyways, that'll do it. If you could just do me a favor again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it's a Giants W and not a Giant W.